Welcome to tonight's seminar. My name is Peter Raftopoulos and I'm the president of the Ithacan Historical Society, which is proud to support our online lectures and hopes to engage a wide audience on the history of Ithaca and the broader Ionian region from antiquity to more recent times. Tonight, our speaker is Dr. Tsakiri, a historian of the Venetian territories in Greece. The topic of her doctoral thesis was the punishment of crime in Venetian Crete. Following her doctoral studies, she completed her postdoctoral research at the Ionian University in Corfu, with the topic of research being the violence of the Archundes in Crete and the Ionian islands in the 16th to, 16th to the 18th centuries. Her postdoctoral research was undertaken at the State Archive of Venice. Dr. Tsakidi currently works for the National Library of Greece in Athens. She regularly publishes and speaks at conferences on early modern Greece. Dr. Tsakidi's interests in Ithaca in particular grew with her archival work at the State Archive of Venice during her postdoctoral studies. Following tonight's seminar, there will be time to ask questions on tonight's topic. We will take questions from both YouTube and Zoom, and I will let you know how we can do this once discussion time starts. Before I hand over to Dr. Tsakiri, just a reminder to please keep your Zoom microphones on mute throughout the seminar. Tonight, Dr. Tsakiri will speak to us on brigandy and piracy in 17th century Ithaca. Welcome, Dr. Tsakiri, and we look forward to your presentation. Um, good evening. Good morning from Athens. Uh, good evening to Melbourne. Uh, many thanks uh, to uh, Mr. Peter Raftopoulos, uh, the president of uh, Ithaca Historical uh, Society. Uh, for the invitation. Many thanks to my colleague and uh, a, a friend, I can uh, say that, uh, Mr. Kiriakos Nikas for the invitation and uh, all the help and uh, the members of the Ithacan uh, Society and uh, all the audience. Okay, uh, can I uh, start uh, the uh, presentation of uh, the... Uh, now of uh, the PowerPoint. Uh, yes, Romina, you can share this slide. Okay. One moment, please. Okay. It's okay. Perfect, thanks for minute. Okay, okay. Yeah. thank you so much. So uh, I can, um, um, uh, I, I can uh, talk, uh, I will talk, uh, in, uh, in this talk I will focus on the pirate and bandit activity uh, of the inhabitants of Ithaca under the Nissan rule, uh, 1500 to um, uh, 1797 placing the emphasis on the uh, 17th century when the activity of pirates reached uh, its peak. In a brief uh, uh, preamble, uh, we would say that the 16th century is a period in which developments signified a new situation at sea. As of the latter half of the 16th century, Portolans, uh, which is Harbour Charts, are printed, which will take on a more scientific form in the mid uh, 17th century. The experience of the seamen, crucial up to that point, was based on the helmsman, the pilot. In the last decade of the 16th century, we have a new type of ships of higher tonnage which gradually prevailed in the 17th century. Portolans and larger ships will pave the way for long voyages. Up until then, the ships uh, sailed along the coast in order both to avoid enemy and pirate raids and seek uh, refuge to a harbor in case of adverse weather conditions. 
the Ottomans will gradually prevail in the Eastern Mediterranean in the 16th century. Their prevalence will bring the five states of the previous era, um, such as Algiers, Tunis, Libya, and Tripoli, under their rule. Their presence in the Greek seas will be catalytic. It will push a number of Muslim pirates to Coroni, Lepanto, Santa Maura, Vlore, Dulcino, causing the reaction of the uh, Christian states. The repercussions of the victory of the Christian powers in the Battle of Lepanto, uh, 1571, resulted in an increase of the Christian corsair activity in the Ionian Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean. At uh, this point, I would like to make a distinction between the pirate and corsair. The characteristics of the pirate uh, are he sought uh, to get rich illicitly. He often had accomplices among state officials. Sometimes he represented social injustice. The corsair, on the other hand, practiced legal piracy. He acted on behalf of a state. He committed assaults against the economy and commerce of another state. He had credentials, um, the license in uh, documents, um, uh, the uh, word is patente in Italian, and hoisted the flag of the state of whose behalf he acted and to which he uh, yielded part of the loot. For this reason, he had the support of all the ships of his state, war or merchant, as well as those of allied states. Several of the uh, late uh, uh, 16th century corsairs were at the service of the state of Spain, as well as the kingdom of the two Sicilies, Messina and Naples, or Mallorca. We should note that the Greek of Corsairs gathered in Naples, in Naples. Others were at the service of Portugal, the Medici of Florence, the Duke of uh, Tuscany, or the Pope. The aim of the Christian Corsairs was to deal a severe blow to the economy of the Ottoman Empire. The assaults were carried out in the context of a, a holy war against the infidels. For example, we can mention the attacks of the religious orders against the Muslims uh, based on the spirit of the Crusades. Similar orders acted in Livorno and in Malta. The order of Saint uh, Stephen was founded in uh, 1560 and until 1640, it dominated the Greek seas, only to be limited to the um, Tyrrhenian Sea later on. In Malta, uh, the order of uh, St. John uh, acted there in Malta. Moreover, the victory in Lepanto had boosted the liberation movements. As a result of this, several Greeks living along the coastline sided with the pirates. The Duke of Tuscany and the uh, Viceroy of Naples instructed the pirates not to harm the Greeks, but foment the revolutionary spirit instead. Of course, the conflicting interests of the European states are not negligible in the approach of the Greek population by the Christian powers. Now, moving to the Ionian Sea, we will note that many inhabitants of the Ionian Islands served uh, in the ships of uh, corsairs and pirates. 
I shall only mention Petros Lanchas from Corfu, active in the latter half of the 16th and the former half of the 17th century, and Statis Romanos Manetas, uh, 17th century, who uh, later in the latter part of the 17th century became uh, a raider for, for the Venetians and their wars against the Turks. Several of those people had their families and friends on the islands and therefore enjoyed the protection of the inhabitants against the Venetian authorities. The Venetians, in contrast to other states, tried on several occasions to counter fight piracy and their territory in their territory since it harmed their diplomatic relations. Um, with uh, the neighboring uh, uh, Ottoman Empire and the uh, other European states, but also its own commerce and economy. We should bear in mind that the influence of the pirates of the people was significant, thus causing the fear of authorities for possible revolutionary movements. Characteristically, we should note that the inhabitants of the Ionian Islands offered sanctuary to the pirates, Ithaca is a typical example, and often informed them of the movements of Venetian galleys. The duration of a pirate's activity was usually limited. As a general rule, they didn't last long. However, there are cases that don't fall into the general rule. We might mention the case of Petrus Lanzas from Corfu, whose pirate activity spanned several decades. Besides, quite a few of the pirates tend to legal plunder as they rallied uh, under the flag of a state. Lanzas actually served under the flag of the Venetians and then under the Spaniards, thus at times uh, leading uh, thus at times leading the two states to diplomatic but also naval conflicts, not only because of his actions, uh, which every time afflicted the interests of the open opponent, but also because they both sought after him. In the latter half of the 17th century, Statis Romanos Manetas carried out hit and run operations for the Venetians in their wars against the Turks. The loot of piracy could be livestock and crops, readily utilized to feed the crews, or mer merchandise from plundering commercial vessels, which secured a great profit for the pirates. And of course, people, some of them are used as oarsmen in the galleys, uh, while others are ransomed by their relatives or are sold in the slave markets. At this point, we might note that uh, uh, redeeming prisoners by paying ransom was quite profitable business. On the other hand, there were special funds called sclaviatica, ransom uh, funds, it means uh, ransom fund, uh, for the uh, ransoming of prisoners. Now, uh, I would like uh, to uh, show you the main sea routes here. Uh, you can see them. Um, and in every route, uh, we can um, we can uh, um, see some uh, bases and hideouts uh, and hideouts. Uh, from the Adriatic Sea, in, in the route from the Adriatic Sea to the Eastern Mediterranean and Alexandria, uh, we, we can see that the uh, Ottoman or Venetian dominions became hideouts and bases of operation or supply stations for the pirates. On the part of the state, and not only, they also became patrol and down use bases 
in this unorthodox war between the pirates and the authorities. This is the case uh, with uh, the activity of pirates uh, based on larger or smaller islands or even tiny rocky islets of the Ionian Sea, among which Ithaca. Pirates established bases in Vlore, the Bay of Preveza, Mesolongi, Santa Maura, Lepanto, Cefalonia, Zante, and Ithaca. New archive materials. Uh, here uh, uh, a set of uh, uh, brings to light valuable evidence concerning the pirate and bandit activity of its inhabitants. Uh, now to the route uh, 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 across the Aegean to Smyrna and Constantinople. Dilos, Mykonos, Donusa and the Cufonicia all became hideouts of pirates. From Castellorison to the Hellespont, the smaller islands of the uh, Dodecan uh, Dodecanese, but also some bigger ones, uh, such as Astipalia, as well as the islands of the northern Aegean, Chios and Psara, became pa pirate hideouts or bases, and uh, from Cape Maleas along the Greek coast of the Aegean. Pirate activity is spotted in Monemvasia, Nafio, uh, Piraeus, Chalkis, Lamia, Tassos, uh, Aioros, and Samothraki. Now I, I may move to present uh, the activity of pirates and smugglers on the island of Ithaca, as well as the participation of the rest of the inhabitants of the island in the pirate and bandit activity. I conducted research in the State Archive of Venice, where I, I pinpointed material mainly in the reports of uh, Venetian uh, officials and their letters to Venice. This is a um, uh, testimony by the authorities of Cephalonia, whose administration Ithaca came under. At this point, we should note that the, the first references to the governor of uh, Ithaca are quite unclear. Initially, the post was probably occupied by, uh, by a Venetian. But uh, during uh, the um, 16th century, uh, we encounter some testimony about a Greek uh, governor coming from the Isle of Cephalonia under the title of Capitano. Later on, uh, in uh, 1563, Venice will meet the re request of the Community Council of Cephalonia for the election of the Capitano of Ithaca from the ranks of the notables of Cephalonia the cittadini. This is the local uh, nobility, as we heard uh, extensively for, from our colleague, Mr. Kiriakos Nikas, in the first presentation. We will mainly focus on the 17th century, when the pirate activity reaches its peak, so as to have as comprehensive a picture as possible. The archival evidence is indicative of what happened throughout the century. The inhabitants of Ithaca conducted pirate and bandit raids in the broader area, both at sea and on land. Let us bear in mind that uh, uh, in this period, smuggling was a scourge of the Ionian Islands and the opposite mainland under Turkish rule. Grain, pulses, timber, rocks, fabrics, livestock, and raisins, especially in the uh, 16th and 17th century, were the most important contraband uh, goods. The Ithacans were not exempt. 
Every now and then, Venetian officials pointed out that this kind of activity did harm to commerce and affected uh, negatively the relations with the neighboring Turks and the overall interests of the Serenisma. We must stress that the, the testimony of the Proveditore of Cephalonia throughout the century is particularly illuminating about the character and the delinquent activity of the inhabitants of Ithaca. They are described as reckless, audacious, and um, unrepentant, never fearing prostitution and people of authority who were sent over from Cephalonia. Besides, the Venetian authorities of Stefanonia quite often admitted that the inhabitants of Ithaca would not recognize the authority of the capitano of the island either. On the contrary, if someone were summoned for whatever offense, they would not appear before the authorities and the possibility of exile did not concern them, as they knew they would not have to leave their home and the island. The Venetian uh, officials also referred to the uh, extensive participations of the exiles living off the island uh, in the bandit and pirate raids. According to Coronelli, in the late 17th century, many inhabitants of Ithaca were fugitives and exiles from Jante, Corfu, and Cephalonia. Understandably, the activity of pirates and bandits were easily was easily transferred uh, from Ithaca to the neighboring islands due to the short distance among them, especially Cephalonia and Zante. It is indicative that the nearby island of Cephalonia faced severe problems because of the bandit activity of exiles in the 16th and uh, 17th century. Another parameter of the problem is that uh, several exiles sometimes resorted to the bylaw of Constantinople and managed uh, to secure uh, a pardon and free passes from him, with which they returned to their home and continued their bandit activity. For this reason, for this uh, reason, the authorities of the Ionian Island often addressed uh, the bile of Constantinople, informing him about specific people with particularly delinquent activity. On the other hand, they also addressed the authorities in Venice, asking for such permits to be granted sparingly. The Ithacans then offered refuge to all those who went there, most of whom were exiled by the authorities of Cephalonia. Several of these exiles became gang leaders. Uh, Caporioni is uh, the word uh, uh, in Italian uh, that uh, we found uh, in documents, we find in documents, and afflicted the local population or armed small boats and sent to the mainland where they pillaged and destroyed without fear, in the belief that the Turks would not protest. Besides, they incited other inhabitants to illegal acts. We would summarize the following as causes for the attitude of the inhabitants of Ithaca, the mountainous terrain of the island and their homes, which were in unapproachable parts, far from the fortress where the capitano presided, the lack of sufficient military uh, forces on the island. The distance from Cefanonia, where the administrative and uh, military authorities had their headquarters. This made the immediate intervention and the dispatch of uh, reinforcements difficult. Their ability to escape in case of persecution to the inaccessible mountainous parts of the island or to the neighboring islands in their boats. 
the lack of uh, an efficient authority on the island, which would manage to handle their audacity. audacity. At times, actually, the Venetian officials mentioned the inefficient, inefficiency of the people occupying the coast of Capitano. They complained that Ithaca was often governed by a person who tolerated and supported such situa situations due to family ties with the inhabitants of the island or the exile from Cephalonia, who refused there and joined forces with the Ithacans in pillaging the mainland. Besides, the fact that uh, he was uh, of the same nationality and came from the same place as the culprits made him suspicious of involvement in the illegal activity of the inhabitants of the island throughout the 17th century. The pirate activity of the Ithacans emerges broadly from the archive material as they carried out assaults at sea close to their island against Santa Maura, which was under Turkish rule, and against the mainland opposite. As a result of this activity, there were constant protests of the Turkish authorities of Santa Maura and the rest of the Ottoman territory, who demanded the prosecution of the pirates. In their exchange of letters with Venice, the Turkish authorities described the events succinctly. An incident in 1621, uh, uh, which uh, uh, the authorities of Cephalonia and Venice dealt with, is indicative. Ithacans in five boats followed a vessel from Santa Maura and looted it, leaving a good deal of livestock to their place. Then they sailed to the mainland, where they attacked a group of Turks, robbing them of their wheat and horses and taking them as hostages, with a view to asking for ransom. The testimony of a Turkish notable after his release gives us a very exciting account of the events. With three of his companions in the Christian, they set off on their journey, transferring wheat from Akalia. In Igumenica, in an unapproachable and rough place, they encountered uh, 36 in Ithacans, Larking, who attacked them, looting their Syrians and their three horses, the donkeys of the Christian, and their clothes and belongings, among which a silver sword and valuable fabrics. The pirates loaded their prey and victims on the five hidden boats and led the hostages to caves in the neighboring islands where they mistreated them so as to secure ransom. They proceeded to send part of their prey in Erisos, Cephalonia, and then took their prey to Ithaca. From there, they asked for almost two and a half thousand reals as ransom for the release of the hostages. The brother of the Turkish notable con conducted a, a relative of the pirates from Zante, who carried out the negotiations with the pirates. The hostages were released and taken to Cephalonia on a British boat. The protests of the Turkish authorities brought about their uh, prosecution. In his testimony to the Venetian authorities, the Turkish notable accuses the Ithacans of tolerance, involvement, collaboration, and complicity with the pirates and bandits. Characteristically, he says that uh, they are so insolent they will stop at nothing. He expresses the opinion that Ithaca is poorly admin, uh, administered, and the Capitanos tolerate some, such breaches of the law. According to the same person, as a result, Ithaca has become a little Malta, una Malta piccola. The Venetian authorities deal with such like cases of piracy throughout the 17th century. 
captivating stories unfold from the archive material about pirates and outlaws who had Ithaca as their retreat and pillaged the surrounding area, whether at sea, on the islands, or the mainland, thus causing trouble to the Venetians. We should try to abandon our perceptions, uh, perception of large pirate ships uh, we have all seen in relevant films. In a shorter range pirate activity, uh, uh, in a shorter range, pirate activity conducted even with privately owned small boats, while the Itacans and the other islanders sought refuge in the rocky caves of the islands along uh, with uh, their boats. Let us not forget that the region of the Ionian Sea lent itself uh, for pirate activity since at the same time significant maritime activity developed there, which resulted in increased seaborne trade, to which the Ionian Islands contributed greatly. The cost of pirate raids resulted in the poor supply of the islands with uh, uh, wheat and cereals. Caught in a vicious circle, circle, pressed by poverty and lack of food, the inhabitants were pushed to ban the raids against the nearby areas of the Ottoman territory. Actually, the conditions of insecurity prevailing in the broader area often intensified or even uh, necessitated pillaging. Of course, in such an insecure environment where piracy uh, was the order of the day, Ithaca also became the target of pirate raid, raids by Turkey subjects from the opposite coast as well as from Santa Maura. Uh, whose inhabitants pillaged them uh, with uh, just as much fairness. It is indicative that at times non aggression pacts were signed and the truce was uh, called between uh, the two islands, whereby the two parts pledged to abstain from rage mutually. Their authorities, the Ra, of Santa Maura uh, and, uh, on, the, uh, on uh, the one hand, and the priests uh, and elders of Ithaca, on the other hand, uh, were con considered accountable for their subjects and committed themselves to seeing that uh, in case of raids and hostages, the culprits would not uh, uh, would be punished, uh, would be punished and um, the hostages and the stolen goods would be returned to their places. As we reach uh, the end, we would like to note the following. The case of Ithaca, many parts of which are unapproachable and difficult to control, is strongly uh, remin uh, reminiscent of the way of living of other parts of the Venetian territory, where people often uh, resorted to boundary to secure the necessary resources. Furthermore, several of the characteristics of areas uh, which were uh, inaccessible by the administrative centers can be seen in this island. These characteristics define the attitude of the inhabitants and their administrators, blood relations and other ties of uh, dependency, mainly with exiles on the island coming from Cephalonia, the solidarity and mutuality that characterize uh, sec secluded areas, but also vested interests. Within the broader the morning of an area plagued by pirate raids, several people could easily turn from outlaws to law abiding citizens by siding with the Venetian authorities and thus securing a button. 
The power of plunder enabled those who claimed to be chiefs to negotiate with the authorities and secure a relative autonomy within the state system for themselves and those under them. People who officially exercised state authority but did not refrain from illegal activity behaved similarly. Venice, on the other hand, was uh, flexible in order to protect its interests and normality in the Ionian Islands, as was actually the case with the rest of its dominions. I would like to thank you all. Um, this was my presentation. Thank you for your attention. attention. Thank you very much for that uh, very informative seminar, Dr. Tzakidi. We really appreciate that as uh, Ithacans and uh, the Ionians and Greeks. So uh, it was uh, a fascinating insight to uh, that topic and also to the character of the Ithacans. So uh, you've definitely broadened our understanding of brigandian piracy in 17th century Ithaca. We'll now have time for a few questions. So from both YouTube and Zoom. If you'd like to write your questions uh, in the chat box, I'll be uh, happy to open up uh, questions uh, if you'd like to ask uh, Dr. Zakiri some questions specifically. Personally, I'd like to ask a, a question uh, uh, Dr. Tsakidi, how, how uh, easy was it to, uh, for the common person to access the Venetian files in, uh, or the Venetian uh, archives? Because uh, many Ithacans are very interested in uh, doing a bit of uh, research in that regard. Um, um, I, I, could, uh, I could answer this uh, in, in Greek, please. No problem. Okay. No problem. Okay, το αρχείο της Βενετίας είναι ανοιχτό σε όλους τους μελετητές. Ε, μπορεί ο καθένας να πάει και να ε, κάνει την έρευνά του. Ε, βέβαια, το αρχή, το, ε, δεν υπάρχει κάποιο συγκεκριμένο αρχείο για την Ιθάκη. Βρίσκουμε κυρίως σκόρπια έγγραφα ε, και κυρίως ε, αναφορές που αφορούν το νησί της Κεφαλονιάς. Ε, στο οποίο ουσιαστικά η Ιθάκη ήταν δεμένη. Ε, η, από εκεί έρχονταν οι, οι ε, καπιτάνοι του νησιού της Ιθάκης. Άρα οι αναφορές για την Ιθάκη είναι πολύ λιγότερες και θα λέγαμε σκόρπιες. Thank you very, thank you very much, Dr. Tsakiri. Would, uh, uh, Kiriaku, would you like to... Uh, maybe translate a little or ask a follow-up question? Um, sure, yeah, I'm happy to. Um, I think Romina essentially said firstly that the, the archive in Venice is open to all researchers and second that there's no specific archive um, uh, or section of the archive devoted to Ithaca um, and instead you find um, dispersed references in various places to Ithaca through the archive. Uh, and, and so um, it makes that research, I guess, more difficult. Um, uh, I had a different question, um, but I think perhaps the archive will be something we'll come back to. My question, um, Romina, is about the um, illegal trade in um, the current, the Uva Passa, um, mm -hmm. which is happening at the same time as this uh, growth in pirate activity. So I'm wondering, is, is that illegal trade somehow part of this phenomenon of piracy or is uh, piracy something that's happening separately? Are pirates involved in the current trade or uh, is it a separate Uh, phenomenon. Ε, όχι, συμπεριλαμβάνει και το ε, λαθρεμπόριο τη ταφίδα. Πάρα πολύ έντονα, πάρα πολύ έντονα. Όχι μόνο από Έλληνε. 
είναι ουσιαστικά ένα πεδίο στο οποίο ε, κινείται ε, πάρα πολύ το λατρεμπόριο. Αυτό, αυτό θα ήθελα να, να πω. So, Kiriak, would you like to just maybe uh, translate into English just uh, briefly? Oh, uh, <laughs> um, she, um, Romina essentially said that um, no, the illegal trade in um, the current did um, encompass also the pirate activity. Um, so it, it was, they weren't separate, that they were um, the illegal trade in, in the current included pirates and not only Greek pirates, but foreign pirates as well. Um, and I, I guess as a follow up, as a clarification, Romina, when you say foreign, um, what particularly, what pirate or illegal actors are you uh, referring to in particular? In the world of Ionian, especially, there are many Gallies, Spanish, Angli, ε, εμπλέκονται όλοι σε πειρατική δράση, στην πειρατική δράση. Α, οι Βενετοί οι ίδιοι. Δηλαδή, δεν μένει κάποιος απ' έξω. Α, οι, οι Οθωμανοί, από την άλλη, ε, δεν μένει κανείς απ' έξω. Από το χώρο της πειρατείας. So, so it sounds like a very active area where pirates from uh, various regions, from Spain, uh, the English, uh, or, or the Ottomans, uh, the Venetians, um, the French, they were all involved. And of course, uh, the currents uh, that grown on Ithaca were a very um, valuable resource. So obviously, uh, that would have been uh, the prime um, uh, trading <laughs> instrument back then. Um, it was interesting, uh, even in Westminster, uh, there was discussions about the activity of Vithican uh, currents. So it was a, a very well-known uh, producing area because they were so valuable back then. And um, so obviously uh, that area was quite busy. The Catholic and the Sitakis are based on the πειρατικά of the δεν είναι ότι λειτουργούν μόνο με τις βάρκες τους ή με τα δικά τους πλεούμενα. Ε, πάρα πολύ εύκολα μπορούν να ε, επιβαστούν σε ένα τέτοιο καράβι εκείνη την περίοδο. Όχι μόνο οι κάτι της Ιτάκης, όλοι οι κάτι του Ιωνίου. Would you like to translate that, uh, Kiriakou? Yeah, uh, Romina just said that, um, again, I guess, to the point about the the amount of foreign involvement in the Ionian, the Ithacans um, aren't only uh, practicing piracy on their own ships, but they also board onto, um, onto foreign ships as well. So um, that's not something I'm, I know anything about, but I assume Romina means uh, either because they, um, they take hostage or they, they, they hijack foreign ships, or perhaps because they're involved in another way. Ναι, και ως πληρώματα δουλεύουν στα ξένα καράβια. Και ως πληρώματα δουλεύουν. Όχι μόνο, όχι μόνο, δηλαδή δεν εμπλέκονται μόνο στο ότι παίρνουν ομίρους ξένους, αλλά μπορούν άνετα να δουλέψουν σε ένα καράβι με σημαία της Μάλτας, με σημαία της Ισπανίας. Εξάλλου και ο Λάντζας ο Πέτρος Λάντζας, ε, αυτό κάνει. Ε, τάσεται μία με τους ε, ε, Βενετούς, μία με τους Ισπανούς, ε, κάποτε λειτουργεί αυτόνομα. Ε, υπάρχει μια κινητικότητα στο χώρο. That's, a, that's an interesting perspective, uh, Ramina, that uh, the Ithacans themselves were involved in piracy because uh, I was always under the impression that we were the Ithacans were uh, receiving the uh, uh, or pirates were chasing them and their uh, their uh, crops, but uh, obviously the Ithacans were quite involved themselves. Is that correct, Romina? Ναι, ναι, όλοι οι κατοικοί των Ιωνίων ίσων εμπλέκονται σε αυτό. 
τελικά. Και... And Όχι μόνο η Ιθακίση. All the Ionians were, were involved in that, uh, that activity. We, we have a, a question from uh, Andrew. Uh, if you'd like to unmute yourself, Andrew, and ask a question of Dr. Tsukiri, that's looking wonderful. Yes, uh, Doctor, I'm not sure whether this is in your sphere of knowledge, but um, I've often uh, been aware that some of the villages and, and um, towns in, in Ithaca were established um, on the mountain tops, uh, mm -hmm. such as Exoyi, Anoyi, mm -hmm. uh, whereas they were co the coastal, they actually originated as coastal villages. And because of the piracy problem, um, the inhabitants moved um, up at the, the higher parts of the island to escape um, being um, uh, being attacked or robbed or so on. But what I don't quite understand is um, when when was the height of the activity of piracy such that um, people actually re-established their villages on the higher parts of the island? Was it was it was that a defined period in the 16th, 17th, or whatever century? Because they, they, th those villages were established and seemed to remain there. Uh, and, and the coastal ones also remained there, like Kionyi and, um, you know, Frikis uh, and, um, and Vathi, obviously. But, um, um, like, I believe, I believe that the, the uh, Exoyi was established by um, people escaping, you know, the coast. Um, well, I guess in, in the Afales area, I guess, uh, on the coast, um, because Exoy is immediately above there. Platritias is sort of like halfway up, I suppose. And um, um, is there any sort of a correlation between when Ithacans actually moved their, their settlements uh, because of piracy? Ε, αυτό δεν μπορώ να το πω αυτή τη στιγμή με σιγουριά, όμως ε, ε, ακόμη και οι ίδιοι όταν μετακινούνται, ε, πάρα πολλοί από τα χωριά αυτά κατεβαίνουν... Ε, αυτό ε, ε, είναι λογικό να συμβαίνει, κατεβαίνουν στην ακτή και παίρνουν ήδη μέρο σε πειρατικές ε, ηλιστρικές επιδρομές. Αλλά αυτό που ρωτάτε, ε, αυτή τη στιγμή δεν, δεν μπορώ να, το, να σας το απαντήσω με βεβαιότητα mm. για, το, για το πότε, για το πότε mm. γίνεται αυτή η μεταφορά. Μπορείτε, mm. uh, Κυριάκο, would you just like to uh, uh, comment on that response? Um, I don't want to take over from Romina, um, but there's one interesting thing that I thought of. Um, the one of the earliest detailed maps that we have for Ithaca is by um, Buon del Monte, whose maps are published in around 1420. Uh, mm -hmm. There are several different editions, and some editions have more or less detail. And in some of those maps, you have three um, distinguished oh. towns on the island of Ithaca depicted, which um, is particularly interesting because the early Venetian um, references refer to always to three towns. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and those are identified now as um, Vathi, Anohi and Exoyi. Um, but if this map also represents something of truth, of reality, rather than um, a cartographic fantasy, then those towns had existed already in the 15th century, a hundred years before the Venetian resettlement in 1504. So um, it may well be that those mountain mountain towns, those two mountain towns, Anogi and Exogi, excluding Vathi, mm -hmm. it may well be that they um, had been there for a lot longer than um, we think. Um, but I, I'm not aware of any other sources from the mm. from that period. Excellent. Well, well, thank you very much for your 
your uh, lecture tonight uh, and uh, in Greece uh, midday there. Dr. Takiri, mm. really appreciate it. Um, so we thank you very much. And if you like to stay on with us, that will be great. Our, uh, our actually, our next lecture and the final lecture for 2021 shall be given by Associate Professor Sakis Gekas of York University, Toronto. Uh, he shall speak on Ithaca's place in the British Protectorate of the Ionian Islands, the last foreign colonial power to rule the Ionian Islands before their incorporation in the Kingdom of Greece in 1864. I'm sure we'll look forward to that lecture as well, just as we did with uh, Dr. Tsikiris' wonderful lecture tonight. So now this concludes the formal part of our lecture tonight. And uh, uh, once I, I close the session, uh, I'll, I'll be able to, uh, if you'd like to stay on Zoom and we can have a, a, an open discussion amongst the Zoom participants that are on live this evening. Thank you very much for all for attending.